Welcome to Stonebox TV, I'm Richard. I'm here with Douglas Castro from Dark Glass Electronics. Uh, we're in the Marriott Hotel at uh, NAM 2016, but we just want to find out a bit more about Douglas, the man, uh, the man who gives his name to Dark Glass Electronics. Because uh, I guess that's something that, that some people don't even know, that Dark Glass is a, 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 a it literally comes from your name, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it like a play on words, yeah. Well, it started 10, 12 years ago when I was, uh, I was writing a lot of music, progressive metal, and I was posting a lot of demos in, in uh, message words and forums, and I would put all the material under the name of Darkglass, so Darkglass was like my project. It never became a band or anything like that, but then that kind of died off, and then when I started making pedals, I sort of liked the name, so yeah, I just took it. <laughs> so how old were you when you started Dark Glass Electronics? I was, let me think, it, it, it's kind of hard because I started like tweaking with circuits and stuff when I was about 20 years old, just fresh out of high school. Um, but Douglas, I think for me at least the birth of Douglas is when the V3K was, was designed and that was 2009, so yeah, it'd, be, it'd be seven years. So what was it that made you start tweaking circuits? Um, I also wanted to do something with music um, when I was 13, 14 and started playing bass. It, it became an obsession, like uh, it, it was my thing. Um, but soon after I realized that it would be really hard to, to make a good living playing music, especially given that, um, I don't know, when, when you see the guys who are making it so talented and, and so dedicated and I realized like I didn't have that that amount of dedication to, to you know to practice 10 hours a day and, and to learn how to read music like that and, and so I always knew that, that I wanted to do something with music but maybe not live off just playing um, so yeah just the idea of starting playing with electronics was was pretty attractive uh, and the idea was that, that if I decided to go for it try to become try to be a professional bass player um, and if I knew electronics I would always fix my own gear and, and maybe like have a like a plan B in case things didn't work out. As it turned out, when I started doing the electronic stuff, I ended up liking it as much as playing music. So that's kind of how it became. So I became really passionate about electronics just as much as I was about music. So combining them was like a pretty logical step, I think. So did you study electronics or have you learned that from, from what you've done? Well, I, I went to, uh, yeah, I went to study uh, industrial electronics technicians. So yeah, I do have a formal background in electronics. Um, it was a very brief career, just couple of years. I just wanted to like get some sort of degree and just start working as fast as I could. Um, so yeah, but what I went to study, it's mostly industrial stuff. So it's like electric engines and, and main auto automation and, and it's more, it's nothing to do with audio or, or, or music. So that, that part I kind of had to like learn by myself for sure. Okay. So what was your vision when you first started Dark Glass? What did you envision it would be if you fast forwarded to now? Uh, that's kind of hard to say because I think when you, like memories, it's a very tricky thing. Uh, and when you look at things in retrospective, it's always easy to kind of like kid yourself or, or, or like have a distorted idea on on, on how, how things went. Um, I think that when I started working on the B3K, which was our first product, um, I knew that the, the sound that I had in my head didn't exist, so it doesn't matter, didn't matter what I tried, I, I, I just couldn't, couldn't get there. I could get kind of close, but not really. Um, so it first started like that, I just wanted to get the sound I had in my head into an actual pedal that I could just plug and get it. Um, once it started developing and the B3K started, started to get ready and I showed it to other bass players, they were like, this is exactly what I've been wanting for. And then I realized, oh, like, there might be a lot of people that might want the same thing as me. Um, I think once I realized that and once I compared it with other bass distortions that were around and I realized that it was actually pretty good and it could <laughs> compete, then I think my ambition grew and I realized that, that this could actually become a real company. Um, then I started reading a lot about entrepreneurship and, and business and, and started getting very passionate about that also. Kind of like, what does it take and, and how can you take something that starts as an idea, you know? So it's something abstract might be a dream or a vision of something. Um, or, or usually you, you have this idea or, or concept of, of on how you think, sorry, on how you think things should be. Um, 
and starting from that really abstract and fragile point of just an idea to actually building a business and 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 to grow a business it's it's very interesting too. It, it um, like running a company. It's a very creative thing. I think uh, people tend to think of management. People tend to think of management as a like a menial or boring stuff. For me, man- management is just as creative and challenging as playing music or designing electronic circuits. I, I would agree with you. Obviously, I'm a business owner, and and I fully agree with you. We've known each other for a long time. I think we were second dealer on board. Is that yes. right? Yes. Yes. You you were dealer overall. I think third uh, in the UK. Second. Yeah. Okay, so um, obviously I know how passionate you are about uh, entrepreneurship. Um, who would you pick out as, as inspiring you in terms of, of that, maybe outside the industry? Oh, well, th- there are many. I, 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 read a lot of biogra- I read a lot of books, actually. I think that that's kind of one of my like, secrets, but not real secrets. Um, I love reading, and I read voraciously. Um, well, right now, Elon Musk, is like, he, he's the guy, I think. I think he's the best probably the greatest entrepreneur ever. Uh, but of course, like Steve Jobs, Henry Ford, Bill Gates, just the great ones. I, I'm really interested about people who saw a different way of doing things that was so radical when they thought of it that, that kind of like no one else agreed with them. You know, that their vision of how things could be was so far out there that people thought they were crazy. And the amount of... of stubbornness and resilience it takes to to go through all those challenges and just make your vision a reality and take it to the point that those guys took it i mean elon musk and jobs and bill gates massive success uh, i really admire that that determination and that that capacity of having a strong vision believing in it even when you don't have any good reason to believe in your vision you know there's no evidence in reality supporting your beliefs on, on how you think things could be, uh, but you still believe in it so much that you go for it and you make it happen. Um, I really admire that and I respect that a lot and that really ins- inspires me for sure. Well, I think the, the base pedal market is a little bit smaller than the smartphone market, <laughs> but nonetheless, the, the same passion and dedication comes through in all your products. So I think that, that's to be admired within you. Well, thank you. Well, you know, for me, it's, I, I'm really passionate about making things the best they can possibly be. and. So that's why I'm, I'm very obsessive with all the little details and everything. But I think it all comes down to just enjoying what you do. Um, I love designing stuff. I, I love designing circuits and, and working with my team on you know when every single little. It, it's it's very fun and it's very 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 interesting to me. So it's it's not really work for me. Uh, it's something that I love to do and I would do it for free. Like if 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 I didn't have to make a living, I would. I would well. I did build pedals for free for a long time for my friends and just for myself. So it's something I, I really enjoy, and I think that's kind of the key. I think it's to find something that you really love doing. Uh, when you find something that you really enjoy, that you're obsessed with, um, you'll get really good at it because you'll think about it all the time. You know, you'll read about it, you'll study. It. Like I think we all have those things that kind of like when your mind is your, when your mind is free or idle. You know, like our brains tend to go naturally to some place to think about something for some people it might be sports or, or anything um, for me it's that every time I, I i'm reading a book or watching a movie or trying to fall asleep all i think about is just circuits and <laughs> it, it, it's i'm obsessed with it. it it's it's all i kind of really care about to be honest um yeah it's for me it, it, it it's a passion you know it's it's and i think it comes back from from starting out as a musician and I used to draw and paint a lot in, in, in school and, and the idea of starting with a blank slate and then creating something that exists because you made it, I always loved that, that idea. So I think the products are just that, you know, you, you have an idea, then you work a lot and, and then hopefully a year later you have an actual product, you know, some, something that you can touch and people can use and and, and play with. Uh, a company is the same, you know. You, you, you can start with an idea and then all of a sudden, oh, if, if you're lucky enough and if you do things right, you know, five, six years later, you might have a team of great people working with you and, and re- relationships with clients, users, suppliers, you know. So it's kind of like creating, creating things from, from uh, some, something as abstract as an idea into something real. It, it's, it's really, really cool and, and really fun for me. Great. Who have you drawn inspiration from uh, within the industry, from other, other pedal builders that you admire? Mm, 
I'm not sure. Like with with pedal builders, it's it's hard for me because um, I I own a lot of pedals. I, I have a huge collection of pedals, um, but since it's it's something that we do, I try not to pay too much attention to what other. Of, of course, I, I I have an idea of kind of like what what other companies are releasing, and especially with the competition, but. I try to do things kind of like my own way, and, and so I try not to pay, pay too much attention to what others are doing. Within the industry, though, uh, Sheldon Dingwell is a really good friend of mine and a really, really inspiring figure to me. He's uh, the way he just doesn't like care of, of what's normal, uh, that irreverence and that courage. It's very inspiring to me, and I try to to learn from that a lot. Um, well. Leo Fender, I think it's it's one of the greatest. Uh, for for me, he's right up there with Henry Ford and, and Steve Jobs. It, he's one of the greatest entrepreneurs, I think. So yeah, there there are many, and, and just because I, I might not draw inspiration directly from other pedal companies, that doesn't mean that there are not other great pedal companies. I think there's a lot of great people doing great things out there, and, and yeah, I have a lot of respect for many many of my colleagues and competitors for sure. Well, it's interesting that you you. Try not to uh, look too much at what the uh, the competition are doing because there was one very high profile competitor checking out your new gear today that we saw on the stand. So how, how, that must must flatter you a brand that that must have been something that you looked up to when you were starting out is now checking out your products. Uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Well, this whole thing is crazy to be honest. Like I, I half of the time I wonder how did we get to this point. Really, for, for me, it's really hard to believe. Uh, um, we're very fortunate to have a we have a very nice facility in, in Helsinki. Beautiful office, really big, spacious. Um, there's a team of six people building pedals. That's all they do all day. Um, great people that I love to work with. Uh, and for me, it's always mind blowing. Like when I go every morning to the office and and you know just like see kind of like how did, what this whole thing has become. It, it's it's quite crazy to me. So for me, something like what happened today is just as, just as surreal. And I, I think it's fine. I mean. At the end, I think people who try to get ahead by, by copying what others do don't get it. I think the companies who really make it, not just in this industry, but in any industry, are the ones who who have the courage and, and the vision to develop their own stuff. You know, like the people who try to kind of like take a shortcut by copying, they don't get it. Like that's exactly why they're not in that position. That's why exactly they resort to copying. If I think if more people just Try to do things a bit differently and just kind of like, you know, just be a bit unusual, you know, like take take risks. Uh, I think that's really hard for people to do, especially because coping is much easier and, and it's really tempting too, you know. And I, I think it's, there's nothing wrong with learning from others, but I think, I don't know, I think you, you're selling yourself short when you, when all you can do is just copy others. I think you're kind of like depriving yourself and others of, of becoming like, you know, growing into your own, you know, developing something something by yourself. And also, when you do something as difficult as, as designing, you know, a product or building a company, you build the company and the product, but you kind of build yourself on the way to usually uh, to get to, you know, to, to, to become or to get to, to, to the point where of, oh, it's kind of hard to say. Um, if you aspire to something and you want to get there, you'll probably have to change as a person. You'll have to become a better version of you to get to that point and to earn it. And I think uh, doing difficult things is just that, you know, doing anything that's really challenging is just a really good vehicle for human development. And I think when you try to share, when you try to take shortcuts, you're kind of like depriving yourself of that, of the opportunity to learn and develop. So, yeah, for me, it's also a lot about that. I think building a company and doing things that are really intimidating and difficult are a really good opportunity to grow and develop and, and learn as a person. And I think that's that's kind of like the ultimate goal, right? Like become the best version of you that you can be. So, so what's the, not the end game, but where, where do you go from here? You've been doubling in business year on year, mm -hmm. is that that's yeah. right? Um, but where do you want to take it to? What's, where, where do you think now I'm happy with what the company is? I'm not sure if that will ever happen. Um, because you'll like, we'll have these goals, and then, then you meet them, and then you're like, okay, what's next? And there's always something else to, there's always a new challenge to conquer. There's always a new dragon to slay. You know, there's always a new monster lurking, 
in the dark trying to eat you, you know? So I think that's, um, I don't know, like for me, the end game is just do what I do every day. It's just get up every day and, and get excited about the things we're doing and, and feel like we're making progress or that we are doing our best to accomplish something bold and ambitious. And um, I think in a way I'm, I'm a bit, I'm not very happy with what we've done so far. If, if we've done really well and I'm, I'm really grateful for it. Um, but I think we've kind of, we have kind of like hold ourselves back a little bit. I think I think now we're kind of like, just now we're beginning to get the hang of this and kind of like getting more confident and ambitious. So uh, we have really really big projects for the next couple of years, and I see that um, the way I think the way I see things now is that the products we're releasing now will pave the way for for the next decade. So everything from developing the technology forming the, the, the right team, um, generating enough revenue to, to, to be able to pay for that R&D. Um, so yeah, I think the best is, is yet to come. I think we're just getting started. I'm just getting the hang of this, so yeah. Um, there's a lot I like to do with software, especially. Uh, um, I don't know, there's just so many so many cool things to, to do. There, there's so much that, that's not being done so far, I think. Um, I always start to think what's the best product that nobody's building um, and try to figure that out and you know give it a try so yeah um, next step at least this year I think I I need some more engineers um, so far it's, I am the only engineer in the company which is kind of crazy because we've just released well two new project you know, some two new products um, so yeah I need some help with with engineering so um, the goal, at least, is for me to detach myself a little bit from the day-to-day R and D and more like oversee the big projects. Um, so yeah, actually, when I go back home, I'll, I'll start. Uh, I already have one engineer that's coming in March, and then I need a, another one that, that I'm still looking for. So, well, if anyone watching is willing to move to Finland, <laughs> send me an email. <laughs> you never know. Um, now, outside of uh, building pedals and now amps. Um, you did say you, you think about building pedals and amps 24-7, mm-hmm. but I know that you're very much into keeping healthy, healthy living, healthy, healthy eating, working out. Um, I guess that's healthy in body, healthy in mind, is mm-hmm. it? Yeah, yeah, well, I think, uh, well, the benefits of being physically active and, and, and I'm not really obsessive with like clean eating or healthy eating. I, I, I enjoy myself, like I eat pizza and ice cream and I drink beer like, like everyone else, but but I think it's. I think we all feel better. I think when you feel good, if you feel like you look good, you feel good. Usually, do good. I think kind of like keeping that confidence high is really important. And um, and a lot of it for me, to be honest, is just being able to cope with the, all the stress and, and craziness of, of, of my work. Um, when you wanna, when you run or on a business. The only thing that's guaranteed is problems to fix. Like every day something happens and, and it can get really overwhelming very easy. Like it can get very stressful very easily. Um, for me, training a lot, it's a really good outlet and, and it really helps me to, it helps me get my head clear and just gain perspective. I think we many times exaggerate or, or overreact to things. And I think usually when I'm feeling really bad about something, maybe really anxious, Usually after training, you, you kind of have like a healthier perspective about it. You can see things more clearly and, and not get too caught up with it. Same with meditation. I, I, I'm really big on meditation, actually. I meditate every day. That's helped me tremendously, actually, to to deal with the, <laughs> with the craziness. Um, I think when you have a very active mind, it's very easy to just be like lost in thought all day. Um, and I think being able to quiet the mind can help a lot to for me it's very important to feel like every morning is a clean slate you know like like every day it's a it's a it's a new chance to build a better future um and for me starting the day with meditation or exercise it it helps me to get it helps me get to that point where every morning feels like a clean slate where we can do work and make things better for us and for our customers so Nice, a nice outlook. And you are recently married as well. Yeah, I got married a year and a half ago. Uh, Hannah, hi Hannah. Uh, yeah, she's a um, yeah, 
my wife is just as crazy as me. She's a, she's a smart one. I'm the pretty one. They're listening. <laughs> I'm kidding. She's pretty and smarter than me. Uh, yeah, she's a veterinarian and uh, she, now she's getting a PhD in uh, molecular biology. So also crazy hours. So it kind of works really well, I think, because we're both at work all day. So if only she was an engineer. Oh yeah, I wouldn't like to work with her. I think that that get weird though. Like I don't know. I think it's good that we both have our own worlds um, that are very different, but we also understand kind of like what the other one is going through. Uh, yeah. That, that, I think it's really important to be with someone that you respect and admire in life. Um, and if they share your level of commitment and passion for work, that's very important because I think for me it'd be really hard to be with someone that you know, not there's nothing wrong with it, but maybe someone who has like a regular job nine to five and maybe they're really passionate about their hobbies or something else. For me it'd be really hard to be with a person like that because I know they could understand what I, what I go through every day, you know. Um, so yeah, I think I got very lucky in that sense that I share my life with someone who, who gets it. Well, listen, Douglas, it's been fantastic chatting to you. It's been absolute, an absolute honour to be a dealer for Dark Glass and to have been on board so early and seen the success that we've enjoyed as well off the, you know, off, off the back of you. Um, and we, we really look forward to the future. We wish you nothing but success, success coming to NAM and seeing you launching. You said two new products. I counted four. I think you forgot your cabinets. Um, and it's just, it's just brilliant seeing you in the main hall of NAM as well, which is a real significant step. So we wish you nothing but the best for the future. So thanks for Thank you very chatting much, to Richard. us. Thank you so much, man. Cheers. Thank you.